بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم اللہ رب زدنی علما صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم آمین الحمد للہ رب العالمین In this lecture, I will discuss the important concepts of resolving of forces with examples. And for this, I am using the work of an outstanding and one of my best student, Ms. Sharika Batool of class 2020, The Lyceum. An important advice for me and for everyone, we must avoid backbiting. Resolving of forces means to split forces into their components, that is horizontal and vertical components. Every force which makes angle theta from x-axis or y-axis has two components, that is horizontal and vertical. Since this force F makes angle theta from x-axis, therefore this force has two components. The component which is opposite to angle theta is always in terms of sine theta and the component which is with angle theta is always in terms of cos theta because this side of the triangle is opposite of the triangle I mean of this triangle and this side is adjacent of this triangle so this component will always be in terms of cos theta so it should be f cos theta and the component which is opposite to angle theta will always be in terms of sine theta, so f sine theta. Similarly, this component of this force f is opposite to this angle theta, so it must be in terms of sine theta, so f sine theta. And this is with angle theta, and this is the adjacent of this triangle, so this component must be in terms of cos theta, so it must be f cos theta. This is the way to resolve forces when force makes angle theta from x-axis or y-axis. Resolve the following forces. This is the question and this is the force diagram. See, this 12 Newton makes angle 60 degree from x-axis. Therefore, this 12 Newton has two components. This is 12 sine 60 because this component is opposite to this angle 60 and this component is 12 cos 60 this and this both means the same thing to make the diagram simple I wrote 12 cos 60 here and we mentioned this thing here this 18 has two components this is 18 sine 60 Whereas this is 18 cos 70, sorry, 18 sine 70, 18 cos 70, because this angle is 70 degrees. This 9 has two components, 9 sine 65, and this one is 9 cos 65. This 3 Newton force has two components. According to head to tail rule, this component is 3 uh, sine 50, whereas this component is 3 cos 50. This is the force diagram. All the components are here. Now, sigma x. Sigma x means sum of all x components of the resultant. Or you can say sum of all horizontal components. Or the component of r in the direction of x axis. Since we are taking this direction positive, therefore, sigma x will be 12 cos 60 plus 3 cos 50 minus 18 cos 70 minus 9 cos 65 and this is the answer of sigma x sigma y sigma y means the vertical component of the resultant sum of all y or vertical component of r in the positive y axis since we are taking this direction positive so 12 sine 60 plus 18 cos 70 minus 9 65 9 sine 65 minus 3 sine 50 this will give you sigma y and this is the formula of resultant sigma x square plus sigma y square under root 
and this is the answer of the resultant of those forces give your answer up to three significant figures the direction of the resultant is denoted by theta and for that always make the rough sketch with the help of sigma x and sigma y sigma x is negative so it's on left side sigma y is positive so it should be in upward direction so this is r and this is the formula of the uh, result direction of resultant so answer is minus 83.1 minus 83.1 means the resultant r has magnitude 17.0 and makes an angle of 83.1 in clockwise direction from the negative x axis you have to mention this statement r makes angle 83.1 in clockwise direction from negative x axis this is the way to state the direction of the resultant example 2 three coplanar forces of magnitudes 15 12 and 12 act at a point a in directions as shown in the diagram find the component of the resultant of three forces in the direction of ab this direction means the horizontal component of the resultant meaning sigma x perpendicular to ab means this direction means sigma y so in this part a we need to work for sigma x and here we need to find sigma y and for that we need to first draw the force diagram with the help of this given situation first we need to make x and y axis and we need to find this angle see this is 40 this is 90 so this must be 50 which is here so this 12 has two components 12 sine 40 12 cos 40 this 12 has two components 12 sine 40 12 cos 40 this 15 has two components this component is opposite to angle 50 degrees so this should be 15 sine 50 and this should be 15 cos 50 sigma x means sum of all x components meaning 12 cos 40 plus 12 cos 40 minus 15 cos 50 this is sigma x sigma y sigma y means uh, take these components positive vertical components so 12 cos 12 sin 40 plus 15 sin 50 minus 12 sin 40 this will give you sigma y and this is the formula of the resultant sigma x square plus sigma y square under root this is the answer of the resultant and this is the way to get the angle theta tan inverse sigma y over sigma x so direction of 14.4 newton 52 8.8 degrees since answer is positive so anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis must mention this statement when answer is positive then write anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis <coughs> next example four coplanar four six act at a point one two three four the magnitudes of these forces are five newton four newton three newton and seven newtons and the directions in which the forces act are shown in the diagram 60 30 90 and this force is horizontal find the magnitude and direction of the resultant of the four forces this is very simple we just need to draw the force diagram and we need to resolve all these forces since this force is acting horizontally so it has no vertical component this will remain as it is this is acting vertically so this has no horizontal component we just need to resolve these two forces so 7 newton force has two components this component is 7 sine 60 whereas this component is 7 cos 60 this 3 has two components 3 sine 30 and this is 3 cos 30 sigma x means all x components and we are taking this direction positive so 5 minus this and this will give you sigma x sigma y means 
all vertical components. We are taking this direction positive. So this minus these two. This is sigma y and this is sigma x. And this is the formula of resultant. Make sure you take negative sign while calculating the angle of the resultant. The answer is minus 27.1. You need to mention this answer. First, you need to sketch the uh, force diagram for R with the help of sigma x and sigma y. This is the force diagram of the resultant. And this angle means uh, the direction of the resultant is, you have two ways to mention the answer. This is the first way, 152.9 degrees. And the other way is 27.1 degrees clockwise direction from the negative x-axis. This is the other way. So direction of the resultant is 152.9 degrees anti-clockwise from positive x-axis. This is just one way. And the other way is the direction of the resultant is 27.1 degrees clockwise direction from negative x-axis. which is here. Whenever they say state the direction or find the direction must give your answer either in this way or in this way. <coughs> this question is very important question number uh, 25 and I think uh, example number four of this lecture. A block A of mass 3 kg is attached to one end of a light inextensible string S1. Another block B of mass 2 kg is attached to the other end of S1 and is also attached to one end of another light inextensible string S2. The other end of S2 is attached to a fixed point O and the blocks hang in equilibrium. This is very important below O. Number one. Find the tension in S1 and the tension in S2. For that, you need to resolve forces separately at A first and then at B. So these are the two force diagrams. When you will resolve forces at A, then tension will uh, act away from A. I discussed uh, the important concepts of forces in my first lecture. And in that lecture, I explain that tension always act away from the point of resolving. Since we are resolving forces at A, therefore, tension would act away from A. We are considering this part only. You can say this part only here. So this S1 has this direction because we are resolving forces at A. And since A has the block A has mass 3 kg, so the weight will be uh, 30 newtons. 3 kg means 30 newton. Let me correct this. <coughs> this is 30 newtons because the formula of weight is mg so 3 times 10 makes 30 and this is 20 so s1 is 30 newtons because this system is in equilibrium meaning upward force is equal to downward force for S2, we need to resolve forces at this point, B. So when we will resolve forces at B, then tensions, both the tensions would act away from this uh, block B. S2 will act away from B, S1 will act away from B. So this is S2 and this is S1. See, when I resolve forces at A, S1 uh, acted away from A. 
now i'm resolving forces at b so s2 will act away from b and s1 will also act away from b this is very important these directions are very important the directions of the tensions always depend on the point of resolving and tension always act away from the point of resolving so s2 will be s1 plus weight of this block b so s1 plus weight of b so the answer will be s1 is 30 and weight of b is 20 so answer is 50 newtons so this is s2 this is the way to get the values of s1 and s2 part b the string s2 breaks this string breaks and the particles fall the air resistance on a is 1.6 newtons this is 1.6 and the air resistance on b is 4 newtons find the acceleration of the particles and the tension in s1 so we need to consider this system separately c let me first correct these things this is 20 newtons this is 30 this is 20 yeah this is fine this is 3a and this is 2a well now we have to resolve forces separately at first at a and then at b so here we are resolving forces at a so when we will resolve forces at a s1 will act away from a since this uh, system is moving down uh, down the earth and in this direction in downward direction so 30 newton force must be greater than sum of these two so according to newton's second law this force is greater than sum of these two so when you will bring s1 and 1.6 on left side you will get this thing 30 minus s1 minus 1.6 is equal to ma this is the second law of, uh, law of motion of newtons the resultant force is proportional to acceleration the resultant force is equal to ma the second law uh, of newtons New newton's second law of motion now here we are resolving forces at b so since we are resolving forces at b so tension will act away from b so s1 will act away from b and will act away in this direction will act in this direction so s1 plus 20 is greater than 4 because this system is moving in this direction in downward direction so s1 plus 20 is greater than 4 newtons so s1 plus 20 minus 4 is equal to 2a 2a means mass of this uh, object v by solving these two equations simultaneously we can get the values of s1 and s2 this question is very important so you can take the screenshot of the solution if you want and you can see the solution of this question in one page take the screenshot of the solution and you can understand this uh, question in this way In this question, the directions of tensions are very important. See, when I resolve forces at A, S1 was acting in this direction. When I resolve forces at B, S1 uh, was acting in this direction, away from B. Equilibrium. Equilibrium means if particle or system is in equilibrium, then the resultant is zero. Resultant of all forces will be zero. And when resultant is 0, then sigma x must be 0 and sigma y must be 0. Because the formula of resultant is sigma x square plus sigma y square. So when this is 0 and this is 0, then resultant will automatically be 0. And sigma x 0 means sum of all right components will be sum of all left components. Sigma y 0 means all upwards will be all downwards.
first uh, question of this topic equilibrium the three coplanar forces shown in the diagram act at a point p are in equilibrium this is very important equilibrium find f and theta part 1 so we first need to uh, resolve all forces and for that we need to draw the force diagram this f has two components this component is f sin theta whereas this component is f cos theta this 12 has two components 12 sin 30 and this is 12 cos 30 since this force is acting vertically so it has no horizontal component you just need to copy this as it is now all right components will be all left components so f cos theta is equal to 12 cos 30 this means equilibrium and this is uh, the equation for f in terms of theta well uh, all right components all up components will be equal to will be all uh, downward components so f sine 30 plus 12 f sine theta plus 12 sine 30 is equal to 10 newtons by solving these two equations simultaneously we can get the value of theta and f as well part 2 state the magnitude and direction of the resultant force at p when the force of magnitude 12 newton is removed when this force is removed we need to state the magnitude and direction of the new resultant of these two forces for that we need to complete the parallelogram this is 10 newton and this is f newton see 10 newtons f newtons this is the resultant of these two forces so the resultant has direction 30 degrees clockwise from positive x-axis and has magnitude 12 newtons this is here you just need to complete the uh, parallelogram this is 10 so this must be 10 this is f so this must be f and their diagonal is of 12 newtons and the direction is 30 degree so the magnitude of new resultant is 12 newton and it makes an angle 30 degree clockwise from positive x-axis or you can state in this way 12 newton the magnitude of resultant direction opposite to that of 12 newton force opposite to this 12 newton force so whenever they say a force of magnitude uh, like for example in this case 12 newton is removed state the uh, magnitude and direction of the resultant of these two forces so magnitude will always be same this is 12 so magnitude must be 12 and direction will be opposite to this force so this is the way to answer this question you don't need to draw this diagram you can just state this thing this is just for your conceptual clarity question number eight and second uh, question of this topic the diagram shows three particles a b and c hanging freely in equilibrium each being attached to end of a string the other ends of these strings are tied together and are at a point at the point x the strings carrying a and c pass over smooth fixed horizontal pegs p1 and p2 respectively the weights of a b and c are 5.5 7.3 and w newtons respectively and this angle is 90 degree find this angle which is theta a p1 x1 this is 90 minus theta and we need w so we need two things this angle and this value we need to resolve this system of forces at x because maximum forces are acting at x we resolve forces at that point where maximum forces act so maximum forces are acting at x so we need to resolve uh, forces along and perpendicular to this point x see since this system is in equilibrium so 5.5 newton is the weight of this particle 
so the tension in this string must be 5.5 because system is in equilibrium so these two forces must be equal must be same since in one string tension is same and this is one string so this is also 5.5 newtons this is w newtons so this must be w and this must be w this is 7.3 so this must be 7.3 this angle is i suppose theta this is 90 so this must be this angle must be 180 minus 90 minus theta which is 90 minus theta and this is the force diagram see this w has two components this is w sine theta and this is or this is w cos theta this 5.5 has two components 5.5 cos 90 minus theta 5.5 sine 90 minus theta and 7.3 will act in this direction because tension always act away from the point of resolving this is 7.3 since this system is in equilibrium so all right components uh, are equal to all left components so w cos theta will be 5.5 cos 90 minus theta and you know cos 90 minus theta is sine theta so this is the equation of w so all upwards will be all downwards therefore w sine theta plus this component will be 7.3 and sine 90 minus theta is cos theta by substituting the value of w here from equation 1 we can get the value of theta so theta is 41.1 and if w is uh, uh, by substituting theta here this value of theta here we can get w which is 4.80 this question is very important and this question is simple as well uh, if you want to take this screenshot of this solution you can the most important thing is the force diagram in mechanics whenever you resolve forces you must be good at this diagram first do this thing and then draw the correct force diagram and these calculations are very simple we just need to form two equations and then solve them simultaneously a, a new concept resolving when resultant force is given if the given system is in equilibrium uh, we, we already have done this thing we just leave this we don't need to do this let me raise this concept because we already have done this so the concept is resolving when the resultant force is given if the resultant force is given like in this case this r is the resultant of these two forces then we need to resolve resultant separately and the forces separately these are two points we resolve both separately that is resultant and the given forces and then we compare their horizontal and vertical components this is the way to solve questions of this type when resultant force is given we resolve resultant separately and forces separately and then we equate their sigma x components and sigma y components see in this question we have this resultant and these two forces so we need to resolve them separately so this resultant has two components 15 sine 60 and 15 cos 6, 7, uh, 60 which is here and these two forces 12 newtons and f newton this is acting horizontally so this is this will just remain 12 this f has two components this angle I think I think will be 50 degrees so this f has two components now we just need to work out sigma x and sigma y so sigma x is 12 newton minus 
f cos 50 and sigma y will be f sin 50 so these are the sigma x and sigma y of the given forces and these are the sigma x and sigma y of the resultant we just now now need to equate either sigma x with sigma x or sigma y for sigma y with sigma y so either equate horizontal or vertical components either both sigma x or sigma y sigma x or both sigma y since sigma y is simple this is just f sine 50 and this is uh, 15 sine 60 so it's better to equate sigma y's of both to get f you could uh, even equate this with uh, this thing you have option either equate these two or these two we equated these two okay example of this concept two forces have magnitudes p newtons and q newton q newtons the resultant this is very important the resultant of two forces has magnitude 12 newton and x in a direction of 40 degrees clockwise from the force of p newtons so this is the direction of the resultant and 80 degrees in anti-clockwise direction from the force q newtons find the value of q we just need to resolve 12 newtons separately and these two forces separately this is the way to solve this type of question so this 12 has two uh, components with respect to this angle theta this is uh, 12 sine 80 and this is uh, 12 cos 80 this is sigma y and this is sigma x now this q will remain as it is because this is acting horizontally this p has two components p cos 60 and p sine 60 so sigma x will be q minus p cos 60 and sigma y will be just p sine 60 now we just need to equate their sigma x and sigma y so sigma x this will be this like q minus p cos 60 is equal to 12 cos 80 this is equation number one and p sine 60 is equal to 12 sine 80 this is equation number two by solving these two equations simultaneously we can get the value of q which is 8.91 newtons next question three coplanar forces of magnitudes 8 newtons 12 newtons and 2 newtons 2 12 8 act at a point the resultant again this con this is very important the resultant of the forces has magnitude r newtons the directions of the three forces and the resultant are shown in the diagram find r and theta we need the value of r and this angle theta we just need to resolve these three forces separately and this r separately so this 12 has two components 12 sine 25 this is 12 sine 25 and this is 12 cos 25 this 8 has two components and this is just 2 because this is acting vertically so sigma x of these uh, three forces will be uh, and this r has two components this is r sine theta and this is r cos theta so sigma y sigma x so this will be these two forces meaning sigma x is equal to sigma x this is sigma x and sigma x of these two forces is 12 cos 25 minus 8 cos 10 so this is equation number one now this is sigma y So sigma y is this r cos theta is equal to this plus this minus 2. Let me check this. I think minus 2 is missing. 12 sine 25 and this should be negative 2. This was missing. I think it was by mistake. 
so by solving these two equations you can get the answer you can get the value of r and theta you can check uh, these solutions with respect to this equation yourself i'm more interested in the resolving this is sigma y of these three forces and this is sigma y of this resultant and these are sigma x of both next question number 18 a particle p has weight 10 newtons this particle and is in limiting equilibrium meaning about to move on a rough horizontal table this means this is the rough horizontal table and then uh, friction would act on this particle because the table is rough the forces shown in the diagram represent uh, the weight of p an applied force of magnitude 4 newtons acting on p in this direction and the contact force exerted on p by the table the resultant of the fractional and uh, normal components of magnitude c so this c means this is the resultant force of r and f it's mentioned the contact force exerted on p by the table the resultant of the fractional and normal components of magnitude c newton so this c is the resultant of normal contact and frictional force find the value of c for that we must uh, first work for r and then f friction so we need to resolve this system of forces we just need to ignore this c newton in this diagram so you just need to check this is the normal contact force normal contact always makes 90 degree with the uh, surface like in this question table this is the frictional force because friction always acts uh, away from the motion uh, against the motion friction always act against the motion since motion is on this side so friction would act in on this side on left side this four has two components and this is the weight which is 10 newtons see sigma uh, since this system is in equilibrium uh, in about to move limiting equilibrium so 4 sine 30 plus r is equal to 10 and frictional force will be equal will be 4 cos 30 and C is the resultant of these two friction and normal contact. So C by using a resultant formula of resultant we can get the value C. Find the coefficient of friction. This is simple. You just need to use this formula of friction mu r because the system is in li limiting equilibrium. We have friction. We have normal contact force. We can get the value of mu. Well, this is all from this lecture. I hope this lecture will help you to understand how to solve the questions of resolving of forces. Uh, inshallah, I will discuss the next topic which is rod and ring based problems in my next lecture. Good luck. And I am extremely thankful to Ms. Sharika Batul who helped me to make this lecture. Indeed, she is an outstanding student. May Allah Pak bless her always. Ameen. May Allah Pak give her the best grades always in all the exams. Ameen. Allah Hafiz.